Oni dau kaka susulia ago sia ago ago anatavia ekilia. Plant is the main issue in the process. When you look at the people who join the militancy, yeah, uh, their age range from 10 to 30, very few above 30. This means, if you look at the, the education policy which this country adopted just before uh, independence, about 30 years ago, these are the product of that education policy. It's called education for what? Now we got the answer. Yeah. Because it's just educate people with no clear objective in life. Yeah. The vision they have was not humanized. Yeah. Because unless you humanize a vision, what you expect the people should be in 20 or 30 years time, yeah, you are not going to achieve any vision objectively. Yeah. So that is the problem. They, they, they create a system, education for what, saying well, let's make people better informed and that's all it is in life. <laughs> Just seeing the the um, the attitudes of the young boys as well, thinking that um, you're a man if you have a gun, you know. It's so sad to see so many Island children now think that way. Uh, the in thing was to wear a camouflage shirt, you know, or green color sort of, you know, that kind of green color clothing, or even just a camouflaged hat. Um, that image of being somebody strong and yeah. There was a lot of bullying, bullying going on during the height of the crisis. And I can tell you, they weren't only against Gorongawa people, they were against Malaitans. And uh, that's why a lot of ordinary Malaitans uh, uh, are still bitter about uh, the treatment they got from their own people during the height, based on rumour, uh, allegations of them being of them helping Gorakanal people. It caused a lot of problems. Uh, Honiara is a small town, and and I've learned from my experience as a journalist never to believe what they say. To start with, it was not a face-to-face -face kind of a battle, you know, that they they did. Uh, to introduce it on the other end of the oil palm plantation, they just came and blew a cone shell, uh, you know, away from the beginning of the plantation. That was a customary thing. They used to do this in the in the in the war, you know, during the uh, the bushmen's uh, kind of process. And once they blow that, and if you hear it, it doesn't matter where you were. You start running. You, you wouldn't know to decide what you're going to carry with you or anything. You just go. You, you're shaking. You're trembling. And this is what happened. You know, they just ran. They left everything in their houses and just went. They climbed onto trucks and began to come down to town. That was the way it started. You know, at, at our area there, uh, nobody was really killed. Really, the only one that were killed are the one who tried to stand and face them. They were the only one that got killed, but everybody else would just move automatically. Nobody did anything to them.
They chased one man down the road to the yacht club. You know that road down to the yacht club? So I pulled up and hopped out of the vehicle and walked. And there was already a huge crowd. And there was this man they grabbed down by the uh, seaside of yacht club. And they were leading him back up. And I remember standing there. And uh, I was totally shocked and numb. Because he had this long, like a dagger, stuck in his belly. And they were walking him from that road up onto Point Cruz and there was a crowd of people and there was somebody holding his hand and lifting him, his hand like this and leading him through the center of town. People were leading out of the buildings and watching this scene and I just stood there and I just couldn't believe that Solomon Islanders were doing that to another Solomon Islander. Uh, my, my whole body went cold, eh? I just, I thought, Jesus Christ. I mean, we've gotten to that stage Somebody said this guy was a GRA. I mean, how did they know? He could have been just a poor Gorongara man who had just come from market, who had nothing to do with the conflict. But everything was based on rumor. And he was stabbed. And he was led by the hand through this crowd. And I remember standing in front of this second-hand shop called the XJ, XJ6 and yelling, saying, when, where's the police? Where's the police? And everybody was like, Shouting, you know, GRA, yeah, GRA, yeah, you know, and I, I, I thought, Gee, are we going to stand here and watch this man be killed? Sanga ata biya katu ingati sana gatu tuni agona barang engo anado una engati wani awa. Sanga alta obia kotu ingati sana gotu tuni. This is Melanesia, where the principles is payback. Yeah? So this is Melanesia. Yeah? So the Aces are not going to accept that. And the people won't accept that because if say, oh, Mr. So and so. Is one of your work. Can you accept him in the community? The people will say, well, who is he? Oh, this guy is an ex-militant. Oh, he's a criminal. Where should be the criminal ought to be? Yeah. Those are the problems. And the criminal knows very well that if he gives his gun, his life is end. Because these militants have killed, have tortured, have uh, destroyed properties and have extorted money from the people. People would come and uh, deal with land and uh, ask us something about land. And a person would sell them a bit and cut the boundaries and so on. And after a month or two, you'd find the boundary moved, you know, it was uh, increased a little bit. And all this kind of thing, you know, as you add all those together. Uh, and I think the best decision is maybe we should move and live our own, uh, in our, on our own islands. Maybe this would settle, you know, all these processes. There may be no fighting, but there are killings. Yeah? If you look at uh, at the the the, the
period prior to the Townsville Peace Agreement. Yeah, there may be a lot of fighting, but there was no, not a lot of killing. Yeah, so in terms of killing, yeah, there is continual killing. Yeah, it's happening, and the killing is becoming selective. Yeah, people looking for all scores to settle. Yeah, while they have the guns. Yeah. So the peace process achieves one thing. There is no mass yeah, violence, militancy, all that. Yeah, that's one thing it has achieved. But it has made the country worse off because it's a bought peace. Yeah? So it has bring all the other services to their knees education, health, yeah, you name it, yeah, because it's a board piece. Everybody already is a Malaitan or a Western or a Gurkana, but never saw an Islander. And that's sad. That's really sad. I, I think that's the way the peace process should push to create some sort of national image that everybody can relate to and, and start remembering that we are so Islanders. Not man from Gurkana, man from Malaita, man from West. I think that's the most important thing. And uh, if the peace process was to work, I think they should also start counselling former militants. <laughs>